Hey, fourth grade, how's it going? Hopefully you're doing well. We are going to continue working with mixed numbers and improper fractions today. So, happy Monday, it's July 20th, 2020. Today you need your book 4A. We're gonna be working on pages 49, 50, and 51. As you can remember, last time we were working on page 48. Let's just take a look at the answers for page 48. Um, when we were doing that, we were looking at the different types of fractions. And it's important to understand that fractions can be in many different forms. They can be in mixed numbers, improper fractions, regular fractions, lots of different ways to remember them. So let's just go through the answers for page 48 just so that we understand what an improper fraction is and what a mixed number is. If we take a look at this first answer, we have three and one half. Now, just like last time, we wrote three and one half, just like this, three and one half. For letter B, again, we had two wholes and four fifths. So this was two and four fifths. Again, this is review. So this should have already been inside of your book on page 48 from July 13. Let's take a look at the next couple of problems. Letter C says two holes and one sixth. Well, here we have two holes and represented one sixth, one of those sixth. Good. Letter D has us writing three holes and let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. All right, we have seven eighths. Good. All right, let's go on to page 49 and continue with this uh, just understanding of mixed numbers and improper fractions. When we take a look at page 49, the directions say fill in the blanks. Here are three ropes, ropes A, B, and C. So here we have rope A. How much does rope A measure? Well, the first problem says that the length of rope A is one meter. You can see that one meter is represented on the number line. So this is one meter. What is the length of rope B? Well, let's take a look at it. Rope B is longer than one meter. If we take a look at the number line, we pass one and we continue to go a little bit further. So what is that rope measure? Well, if we measure it from here and then we go down, straight down, we're at this notch right there. Well, I know that this notch is one. This notch is one fifth because we're counting by fifths, see? Counting by fifths. This notch is two fifths. So this notch must be three fifths. So row B would be one and three fifths. Okay, that's the length of row B one and three fifths. Let's try the length of rope C. So if we look at rope C, we know that rope C is going to be even longer than rope A and rope B. Let's take a look at it. Let me do this in a different color. Let's try red. Rope C is right here. It passes one meter. It passes two meters but it goes right there. Now let's just bring our line down to our number line. We're still counting by fifths, okay, fifths. So how many fifths is that part of the rope? Well, we have two and zero fifths, two and one fifth, two and two fifths. So rope C is going to measure two and two fifths. All right, 
You'll notice, boys and girls, that each one of these slots on the number line is counting by fifths. So we need to understand that every time we go to another spot on this number line, we're going up by fifths, okay? Just like if we were to separate a circle into five parts. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So for example, if I count from one to two, we're counting one, one, two, three, four, five times. To get from one whole number to two whole numbers, we're counting one, two, three, four, five times. Okay, check your answers on page 49. We're gonna go to the next part. The next part says letter B. We need to add up the mixed number. So let's try that. I know that we have three holes. One, two, three. Right there. And we have three fourths. One, two, three fourths. This one doesn't count because it's not shaded. So when we add up three plus three fourths, we get three and three fourths. That's our final mixed number fraction. Let's try letter C. Letter C says we have three, oh, nope, sorry, we have one, two holes, two holes, and we have one, two, hmm, what are we counting by? Halves? No. Thirds? Yes, we're counting by thirds. So two and two thirds would be your answer. Check your answers to make sure so that they are correct. Let's go to the next problem. What we need to do is find out what each mixed number is in its simplest form. So let's try to figure that out. If we have two and two fourths, we can change two and two fourths to two. And hmm, how do we simplify two fourths? Well, two and four can both be divided by the same factor. What factor would that be? Is it one? No, too small. Is it two? Yes, two divided by two and four divided by two will give us our simplified fraction. I know that two divided by two equals one. And I know that four divided by two equals two. So those numbers are now going to be my simplified fraction. Two and one half is the same as two and two fourths. Let's do the next problem. The next problem says four and six eighths. Well, right away, I'm gonna transfer my whole number into my problem, four. That stays the same. Now, let's simplify six eighths. What factors do six and eight both have, both have in common? We can divide six and eight by what number? One? No. Two? Well, yes, but we need a bigger factor. What's the greatest common factor? Three? No. Four? No. Uh, I think we're gonna go back to six, I'm sorry, two. We're gonna go back to two. Two is going to be our greatest common factor. Six divided by two and eight divided by two. What is six divided by two? Well, if we have six and we divide it into two different sections, that's going to equal three. And eight divided by two, we have eight cookies, for example, and we give that to two different students. How many cookies will each student get? Four. So our simplified fraction for six eighths is three fourths. Four and three fourths is exactly the same as four and six eighths. Boys and girls, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try letter C and D on your own.
All right, hopefully you tried both of those on your own. What we're going to do is we're going to check letter C and D to see if we did this correctly, simplifying those fractions. All right, so you remember that first we're going to transfer our whole number into our answer blank. So that whole number is 3. 3 goes into our answer blank. Now, how do you simplify 6 ninths? Well, we have to find the common factor. What is the common factor for 6 and 9? Is it 1? No. Is it 2? No. Is it 3? Yes. It would be 3. 6 divided by 3 and 9 divided by 3 will give us our simplified fraction. 6 divided by 3 is, well, if we take 6 and we divide that into three different groups, there are two in each group. Now, if we take 9 and divide it into three different groups, there are three in each group. So, our simplified fraction is 2 thirds. 3 and 2 thirds is exactly the same as 3 and 6 ninths. Let's do the next problem. How do we simplify 7 and 8 twelfths? Well, 7 is going to stay the same. Our whole number never changes when we're simplifying fractions. So 7 is going to stay the same. And we need to simplify 8 twelfths. How do we simplify 8 twelfths? Well, we find the factor that they have in common. So 8 and 12. What can we divide both numbers by to find a simpler fraction? 8 divided by 8? No. 8 divided by 12? No. By 1? Too small. 2? Still too small. How about 4? Yes, let's divide 8 by 4 and 12 by 4. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. And 12 divided by 4 equals 3. So our simplified fraction is 7 and 2 thirds. 7 and 2 thirds is equal to 7 and 8 twelfths. Check your answers to make sure that they're correct. Letter A, 2 and 1 half. Letter B, 4 and 3 fourths. Letter C, 3 and 2 thirds. And letter D, 7 and 2 thirds. Let's go on to the next problem. Page 50. Page 50, we're going to look at improper fractions. So we've already looked at mixed numbers, now we're going to look at improper fractions. An improper fraction is basically any number that has a big number on the top, in other words, the numerator, and a small number on the bottom, the denominator. For example, 7 thirds would be an improper fraction, or 15 halves is also an improper fraction. The number 15 is big, and the number 2 is small. Let's take a look at page 50. What big number will we put on the top, and what small number will we put on the bottom? Well, we need to count the parts, so let's count them. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six parts that are shaded. So six is going to be my number that goes on the top. That's the number that represents how many parts are shaded. Six. But we're counting by thirds. So what number goes on the bottom? If we have six of these thirds, what are we counting by? Correct. Three. We're counting by thirds. Six thirds is your answer. This also equals two poles. 
Let's do the next problem. The next problem has us counting not by thirds, but by fourths. So, since we're counting by fourths, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight parts that are shaded. In other words, we have eight quarters that are shaded. Eight is going to be our first number on the top. That's going to be our big number. In other words, our numerator. What are we counting by? Well, we're counting by fourths. Each one of these is separated into fourths or quarters. So eight over four is your answer. Just like the first problem, eight fourths also equals two wholes. Check your problems to make sure that they're correct. Let's go to the next part. On the bottom, we have another answer. Pause the video to see if you can do this correctly. All right, for letter C, how many shaded parts do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven shaded parts. Eleven is going to be my numerator. Eleven. What's going to be my denominator? Well, we're looking at the sections. How many sections are these separated into? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six sections. So 11 sixths is going to be your answer. These are called improper fractions. Again, the bigger number is on the top, and the smaller number is on the bottom. The shaded parts go on the top, and the sections go on the bottom. Let's do one more problem to see if we can understand the difference between mixed numbers and improper fractions. Page 51. On page 51, we have to understand the difference between a mixed number and an improper fraction. Here you see one example of a mixed number and one example of an improper fraction. Remember, these are the same. For the first example, 2 and 5 sixths shows us 1, 2 holes, and 5 sixths shaded in. 2 and 5 sixths is my mixed number. For the second example, we counted the amount of shaded parts, and we divided it by the number of sections. So we counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and we divided it by the denominator of parts of the figure. In other words, possible pieces of pizza. Let's do the next problem. For the next problem, what we need to do is try to figure out how many holes and parts are represented. So let's do that. How many holes do we have right here? We have two. Two holes are represented. One, two. This is not a hole. This is the part. So now let's count the parts. How many sections in the parts are represented? Let's count them. One, 
two, three, four sections are represented that are shaded in. And how many do we have total? Well, five, six, seven, eight, nine sections. Two and four ninths is your mixed number. We have two holes and four ninths of the fraction represented. Now let's try the improper fraction. How do we find the improper fraction? Well, we have to count the number of parts that are represented, the total number of parts. So if we have two and four ninths as our mixed number, how do we find our improper fraction? Well, we need to count all the parts that are shaded. These ones, these ones, and these ones. So we have nine here, nine here, and four here. What's nine plus nine plus four? Nine plus nine is 18, plus four is 22. We have 22 sections that are shaded in all. And what's our separation like? Well, we have separations of nine. So that is going to stay the same. You'll notice our denominator in both our improper fraction and our mixed number stays the same. Two and four ninths equals 22 ninths. Boys and girls, that's where we're going to stop today. What we're going to do is we're, I'm going to show you a quick game that we played during uh, class. This game is right here on the screen. So I'm just going to click on this. This is one possible game that you can play. And there's another game that you can play that's right here. There's a whole bunch of games that you can play here. So the first one is just understanding improper fractions. Okay, if you wanted to play this, you could do that. The only thing is you have to kind of understand a little bit of a formula. For example, you have to multiply and then add. Okay, so for example, multiply and then add. We have eight times four, which equals 32, so multiply, and then add the next number, which is one. 32 plus one equals 33. And then our denominator stays the same. So if we took a look at that, our answer would be 33 eighths. Let me just move this over just a little bit. I can't, I can't get that. I'm, I'm not sure why it's not working, but that's okay. I'm going to put some of these links in the video. Um, what you can do is you can try to simplify fractions, equivalent fractions. You can click on this one, the Simplify Soccer. It's a really cool soccer game that you can play if you want to. Try to figure out how to simplify. For example, 3 27ths, we could divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 27 divided by 3 is 9. Come up with our answer and then try to score a goal on the soccer game. Let's see, let's click it right there. Oh, I missed the shot. Try that again. Oh, I blocked it. Sorry, did not score. Next. Uh, okay, so those are just some examples of how you can practice this concept by playing a soccer game. So thank you very much, boys and girls. We will see you during our next class.